Hey guys, in this video, we're going to look at how to create a 3D hexagon background like this that can be still or animated. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, have a look at how to do this in DaVinci Resolve. To get started, let's go ahead and bring a Fusion Composition clip into the timeline and then take it directly to the Fusion page. The first thing we're going to do here is to build a 3D hexagon. And to do that, we're going to use Shape 3D node. So let's do that. Let's bring that in and then project it onto the viewer. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to change shape from plane to cube. So the reason we're doing this is because we want to turn this 3D cube into a 3D rectangle. And to do that, the first thing we need to do is to uncheck lock width, length, and depth. Now, as you see, when we bring down the width parameter, we're now getting a rectangular box. The reason why we're doing this is because if we were to bring in a duplicate node right now, so let's go ahead and go to 3D and then bring in duplicate 3D node connected to our shape uh, 3D node. Now, if we were to, let's say, create three copies of this same shape, and then we're going to turn each by 60 degrees uh, under rotation Z, now you're going to see that ideally we should be getting a perfect hexagon, but that is definitely not the case at this point. As you can see, the corners are not lined up properly, and that is a matter of math. So what we need to do, guys, is to come back to the shape 3D node. And then for the width parameter, let's go ahead and create an expression. And then we're going to drag and drop the plus sign on top of the height parameter. So now width and height are now linked. Then we need to divide height by 1.7321. This is something I looked up on Google, so it's readily available to all of us. So now, as you can see, uh, once we figure out the math, now we have a perfect hexagon. The next thing we need to do is to then duplicate this hexagons so that we can have tens, hundreds, or thousands of it uh, very quickly. And to do that, we're going to once again bring in a uh, shape 3D node. Then we're going to turn on wireframe. So the idea here is that we're going to place our hexagon on all the uh, intersections that you see here. So to do that, we're going to uh, bring in a replicate 3D. So let's do that and let's connect it to our new uh, shape 3D node here. And then uh, we're going to connect our hexagon to the replicate 3D node. Now, if we zoom out a little bit here, you guys will see that we have the hexagons on the intersections, but they're just too big. So what we need to do is to come back to the shape 3D node on the transform and then bring down the scale setting. Uh, and uh, we're just going to keep adjusting it until it works with the look that we're going for here. Once all this is done, what we're gonna do is to simply copy all these nodes and then paste them. So now we're getting another set of all these hexagons. Then let's also bring a merge 3D node and we're going to connect both sets of hexagons to the merge 3D node. The idea here is that we are going to have this new set of hexagons uh, sitting kind of below the first set of hexagons so that they are staggered. And to do that, we're going to come to transform and then change the X parameter first. This will bring it out over to the right. Then we're going to change the Y parameter. What that will do is to bring it down. So now if we go ahead and zoom in a little, you guys will see that they are staggered, but we need to get them as close as possible to each other. We can also change the color uh, to something that's not white, just to help us visually. And uh, if we start to adjust this, guys, one thing you will notice is that when the two shapes overlap each other, we'll get these weird artifacts. That's a telltale sign that they're overlapping and we don't want that. So let's just keep adjusting the Y parameter, the X parameter, and uh, guys, this is uh, this is looking pretty close. We're not seeing artifacts, and I think uh, uh, we're going to stick with this uh, at this point. Okay, so now if we zoom out a little bit, you guys can see that we still have some work to do. We need to bring all these points in, all these shapes in. So let's go to the controls tab, and then let's uncheck a lock width and height. And we're going to start changing the height parameter. And you guys, if we zoom in a little, you can you guys can see that the goal once again here is to bring these shapes as close to each other as possible without overlapping. So that looks good. And then let's go ahead and copy this value and then come to the first set of hexagons. Let's uh, uncheck lock width and height and then paste this value 
to the height setting. OK, now the next thing we need to do is to bridge the gap in between the shapes. So we're going to change the width parameter. And once again, the goal is to uh, bridge this gap as much as possible without the two uh, sets of hexagons overlapping each other. So once that is done, let's copy this value, come to the second set of hexagons and then paste this value under the width parameter. So now, guys, as you can see, we have a perfect 3D background built with uh, hexagons. The next thing we need to tackle is to bring some random movements to the hexagons themselves. And to do that, we're going to bring a displaced 3D node in between Shape 3D and the Replicate 3D. Then we're going to use Fast Noise node as the noise mapping. So let's connect it to Displaced 3D. Right off the bat, guys, you can see that it's doing its job, but it's just way too much. So let's come to Displaced 3D and bring down the scale setting. This is going to control how much the fast noise node is going to impact the hexagon's movements. So once that's been tempered, then we can come to the fast noise node, start adjusting parameters like detail, contrast, and scale. All these, as you guys uh, can see, will bring movements to the hexagons. And if we bring up the C3 just a little bit, and we play this video right now, you guys will see that we have these very subtle movements for all our hexagons here throughout the entire video. So this is this is looking really good. And now uh, at this point, all we need to do is to copy these two nodes and then uh, paste them. And then we're going to connect, uh, connect it to the second set of hexagons here. And then uh, all we need to do is just to make some subtle changes to the fast noise node uh, to distinguish it uh, from the first set of hexagons so that they have slightly different movements there. Uh, and then we can also change the displace node as well. Uh, bring down the or bring up the scale setting a little. Just change it so that uh, the, our second set of hexagons will have slightly different movements compared to the first set of hexagons. But as you guys can see now, this is uh, this is looking good. We have a pretty solid foundation at this point. So now at this point, we can probably change the color for the second set of hexagons uh, back to white. So let's do that. And let's also start to build out the rest of the 3D scene. So let's bring a render 3D node, change the render type from a software renderer to OpenGL renderer. Let's connect it to Media Out 1. Then let's also change the viewer from single to dual. So this way we can view uh, the 3D setup as well as the output uh, both at the same time. We're also going to bring in a 3D camera. So let's do that and then connect it to Merge 3D. And we're going to start adjusting the camera position. And actually, you know what, guys? Let's go ahead and change the color back to something that's not white. This will help us uh, uh, visually. So we're just going to keep changing the camera position until we find one uh, that's going to work for our scene here. OK, so once that is done, guys, let's just go ahead and change the color back to white for our second set of hexagons. The next thing we need to do is to light our scene here. So we're going to bring in a directional light and connect it to Merge 3D. Now, the first thing we're going to do actually is to go to the viewer and right click in the menu under 3D options, we're going to enable shadows. This will enable both shadows as well as lighting. Then under Renderer 3D, let's also check lighting as well as um, shadows. So now we can start to change our directional light. And by the way, if we go to transform and uh, change any settings on the translation, it's not going to do anything. So uh, the only parameter here we're going to change is the Y parameter under rotation. So the idea is that we want the light to point from the left hand side. So now that's looking pretty good. We can also see shadows as well. So let's come back to the controls tab, bring down the intensity. First of all, uh, a little bit there, then also under shadows, start to bump up the density so that the shadows are much thicker. Then let's also turn on softness, change it to constant. We're just going to adjust the softness settings so that uh, the shadows are going to be nice and soft. OK, so that's looking pretty good at this point. Now let's go ahead and make a copy of the directional light node, paste it, and then connect this new directional light node back to Merge 3D. So now if we come to this new directional light node under Transform, change this number from negative to positive 
what this will do is that if we zoom in to the viewer is that it will create now another set of uh, directional light but it's pointing from the opposite direction so now let's come back to controls tab start to bring down the intensity parameter a little bit more let's also do this for the first set of directional light as well let's bring down the intensity this will allow us to see the shadow as well as the shape much better okay guys so uh, this is looking a lot better now um we are getting much closer to the final output but one thing you guys will notice is that if we zoom in, we can see that the sides of the hexagons are completely black while the rest of the scene is pretty well lit. So let's go ahead and uh, fix this issue. So what we're gonna do is to bring a point light node. So let's do that and let's connect it to Merge 3D. Now here, right away, we can see it's making an impact but it's way too strong. So let's just go ahead and bring down the intensity uh, setting a little bit. Okay, so now that is looking much better. So guys, uh, let's uh, come back to the edit page, let it render, and this is pretty much it. So you can either freeze frame an individual frame, uh, or you can let this play through uh, to get the animated effect. But uh, guys, as far as the workflow goes, this is pretty much it for our effect here. Now, one other thing I want to uh, illustrate is how we can light the scene differently so that we can get a slightly different look. So the first thing we're going to do here is to disconnect the point light node. And then let's also remove both directional lights. And instead, we're going to use a spotlight. So let's bring that in, connect it to merge 3D node. And then uh, under transform tab, we're going to adjust under translation the z setting this will bring the camera out and away from the scene so uh, once it's far away enough uh, what we're going to do next is under rotation change the y parameter so this will change uh, how the camera is pointing at the scene so we want the camera to point from the left hand side so uh, we also need to as you can see change the y setting on the translation as well at the same time that we uh, rotate the camera uh, so we're just going to keep adjust to adjusting these settings until it's perfect for our scene here okay so now let's uh, come to the controls tab then start to bring down the intensity uh, setting okay just a little bit there then uh, under shadows let's bring up density so that the uh, shadows are a little bit thicker. Then let's also turn on softness, change it to constant. We're just going to leave the setting the way it is now. All right, at this point, let's copy and paste our spotlight node here, connect the new spotlight node to Merge 3D. Then let's go to transform and then uh, under translation X, let's go ahead and change this number to a positive number. Let's also do the same for the Y setting under rotation. So now we're going to have a new light pointing from the opposite direction. Let's also come back to controls tab, start to bring down the intensity of the light as well. And we're also going to do the same for the other light. Let's uh, bring down the intensity. So this way we can see uh, the, uh, the shadow as well as the shape much better. Okay guys, so now let's connect the point light back to merge 3D. So now uh, we're pretty much done here guys. This is looking pretty good. Another thing we can do is to go to the displace 3D node, start to bring up the scale just a little bit. Um, this can make the shadow a little more prominent if that's the look you're going for here. But uh, at this point, guys, we can basically just go back to the edit page, let the effect render, and this is pretty much it. So this one is going to look a little bit different compared to the other because of how we light the scene differently, but uh, I think it looks just as good. Um, so yeah, I hope this tutorial helps. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you next time.